Hello, good evening. Hey, y'all, welcome back to another Faith Based Workplace uh, rendition. We're going to do this one is my story of parental alienation. So I'm going to share with you my story. Uh, for y'all that didn't catch the, uh, the four part series that my wife and I did on parental alienation, this is going to be like just a, a little snippet of that. It's not, I was like, I can't do that, <laughs> that four part series. So just sit back. Uh, it's not going to be a long video, but like I said, we'll get into uh, my story of parental alienation, you know, just sharing my story to help others. All right, right after this. Hey, welcome back. I didn't tell y'all, man, hey, this is your first time here. Hey, go ahead, hit the bell so you can subscribe to the channel. Also, you know, like the video by hitting the thumbs up. And also, you know, share the video out if you think this content can actually, you know, help someone. Uh, thank you for being with me. Let's get right into this one. Uh, parental alienation uh, takes place when a parent goes out of their way to distance children from the other parent. Uh, this obviously not just in marriages. This can be in just, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend or whatever the case is. But usually, you know, one of the parents basically is taking, taking it upon themselves to just basically take the child out of the other parent life. Uh, we see it a lot. We see it a lot. Uh, a lot of people go to court over this. You know, they're always fighting for custody battles, you know, and it's 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 all over the country, all over the world. So it's not like it's one particular place this happens. So it happens everywhere. So I just want you to be aware that you might be the subject of uh, parental alienation. So I'll share a snippet of kind of what I uh been through, you know, parental alienation with me, I got it twice so one, both times i really didn't know just found out about it in the last few years you know you knew something was wrong but didn't know you know because i was alienated away from my own daughters and you know i'm just starting to build a relationship with my daughters now you know through texts and calling them and things and they adults you know so you 19 and 22 years old at this point so it's like wow so the years fly by and it's it's a shame that you lose those years but i just want to tell you but God, the reason why I say that you have to have patience. Uh, trust me, you have to have patience through this process. It's not an easy process. It's not something that's going to take place in you know, in a month or a few months, because you got to think about the parental alienation. To me, it takes years to build. So it's going to take years to destroy it. So, you know, going through that you know, I had to sit down and actually have a talk with my daughters, just let them know, like my side of the story. So if you're in parental alienation, don't go bash the other parent. That's not a good idea. That's going to actually work against you. That's something that I don't advise doing, talking about the parent. You know, you just always, you know, keep everything positive on your side. Do what you can. You know, if you're paying child support, if you're trying to see them, you know, you're writing them letters, sending them birthday cards, texting them, calling them, whatever it is, just don't stop doing that. But through all that, make sure you're praying for them. Make sure you're going to God in prayer for your kids because they don't know. They're just hearing, you know, what the other parent is telling them. So you have to realize that the parent that they spend majority of their time with, because most of us doing like, you know, every other weekend or uh, something like that. You might get them every weekend, a couple of weeks, you know, maybe a month out of the summer. So for the majority of the time, about 85 percent of the time, 90 percent of the time, there with the parent, you know, that's doing the alienation. So you have to realize that you can't fight that not why they with that parent. And then you got to realize also those kids are young, especially when they're young, you know, under 10. They're not going to understand, you know, you're trying to explain parental alienation. You have to get to a point where they're going to understand, you know, things on their own. So, you know, it's like dropping crumbs. And then they figuring it out on their own. So you're not necessarily saying, you know, hey, your mom is a, you know, she's a narcissist or she's been alienating me from you. You know, you just let them see because they're going to start asking questions. So you have to be ready for those tough questions. Let's get into the first Bible verse. This is Matthew 6, 34. So do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Why did I bring that verse in? Like I told you, it takes it takes years to get through parental alienation. Uh, so you can't worry about things tomorrow, you know, because uh, they're not here yet. Leave that for for tomorrow. Just do what you can. 
the, the day of like today, dude, you can't, you ain't called your daughter or your son, or you haven't texted them. Maybe there's a good time after watching this video, go ahead and text them, call them, try to reach out to them. You have to start somewhere. You know, you, you walk, you walk them out by taking that first step. So it's the same thing with parental alienation. You have to take that first step. And in my, in my account, the first step would be actually prayer, you know, but then also reaching out now, if you can establish a relationship with the parent that's, you know, alienating you, uh, that's big because that doesn't always happen that you can actually have a relationship because what usually happens, the parent is going to say to the children that, you know what, I do everything I can and, you know, your daddy just don't want to come. But in actuality, what, they, what they're really doing is they're destroying a relationship from the inside. So you're on the outside looking in if you to alienate a parent, but that parent is going to sit there and destroy your character. They're going to destroy your reputation. They're going to destroy your manhood, your sisterhood, whatever it is, they're going to destroy it, you know, cause you can have, you know, men doing, you know, alienating also it can go either way. So they're going to destroy that. So what I mean by that is the whole time that they're telling the kids that, you know, I, I make sure your dad can come see you. But every time you talk to them, uh, talk about to the parent, it's always an issue why you can't go get them, why you can't pick them up. Uh, you can't see them this weekend and things like that. You know, it happens, you know, like I said, the men and women. So it's a, it's a world thing. You know, let me bring in some statistics right quick so we can get into this. Uh, according to the American uh, Psychological Association, 40 to 50 percent of marriages end in divorce. That's a high number. If you think about that, uh, I'm not discouraging from getting married, but I'm just saying that's a high number. Uh, and according to Science Daily, one out of now listen to this one out of four children involved in divorce experience some form of parental alienation so what does that take that's a high number for children that's experiencing parental alienation so my thing is it doesn't just affect you as the parent that's being alienated against it also affects the children so you have to realize that the children at the end of the day they didn't ask to be here they just want their mom and dad, you know, I know things happen where you end up getting a divorce and, you know, things like that. Or you just end up breaking up. You never got married. You know, things just don't work out. It happens all the time. And, you know, I'm not going to get into the whole society thing about that, but it happens. You know, they made divorce easy is what I'm getting at. So my thing is, you know, knowing that uh, when you set off this course to be with this woman, uh, I'm talking from a man point of view because I'm a man, but, you know, obviously you can go either way. But when you set off, you know, you say you're going to make sure that's the right person for you, meaning go to God in prayer. Uh, try not to have sex with this person before you actually, you know what I'm saying, get with them and things like that. Just get to know them. Sit down, have a conversation with them. Talk to them. Figure out what their plans is, what they three-year plan, they five-year plan, what's their 10-year plan, what's their credit score, uh, find out that they got, you know, get, get tested for sexual transmitted diseases. Do all that stuff first before you get into a situation that you probably wish you wouldn't have never been in. Because a lot of time, I think, uh, well, I know we'll go and we want to blame God for the person that we prayed about. And I just said this on a video before. The thing about it is we'll pray for the person after we already had sex with the person. Then you want God to fix that. God ain't got time for that. He <laughs> he asked y'all to, uh, he didn't tell you, I should say, to get with that person. But us as adults, uh, some of us as teenagers, you know, I've been a teenager, obviously made the mistake of, you know, laying down and having sex and things like that. But that's bringing in, you know, spirits that we shouldn't even be messing with. Uh, now, would I have gone back and did a lot of things differently? Yes. But at the same time, hey, I am who I am as a man. I've learned from my mistakes. I've learned a lot about narcissist abuse. I learned a lot about parental alienation. Like I said, I've been a victim twice. I ain't told you all the second part. We'll go get into that right after this. But my thing is, you just have to realize that patience, prayer, and those two go hand in hand. Trust me. If you can do those two, have patience and continue praying for those children, trust me, you're going to be better off. And, you know, you, you do what you have to do when you can. You know, if you're working out of state, you know, that puts on a whole nother uh, element, you know, uh, in the parental alienation. Because then the parent can even say, well, look. Your mom don't even care about you because, look, she stays in California and we in Florida. But nobody, just because you have kids, just realize you're not bound to be stuck in the same city with these people. And they try to use that against you. I mean, sometimes you have to move for work. You might have to move for other family issues. You just never know what happens. And then besides that, you might have to move because God told you to move. So that might 
add to the uh, parental alienation. But to me, if God telling you to do something, it's for the better or good. It's, 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 it's for your good. So just realize that. Let's get let's keep moving. Uh, not knowing you were involved in parental, parental alienation is tough. Like I said, I found out these things. I'm 42 years old before the three this year. Find out these things years later about parental alienation. It's not something that, you know, you study in school. It's not something that I can remember that was being taught in high school or middle, middle school or elementary, uh, even in college. You know, nobody talked about parental alienation, not that I can recall. Uh, so, you know, this is one of the things that you have to learn. And it's something that you might just come up on. It's, it'll hit you like a ton of bricks or like a brick wall. So you might end up in a situation where you're with a person and then you have a child with them. And then, you know, if you go through a divorce or a breakup, then you're in a situation where you're on the on the wrong side of the, uh, you know what I'm saying, wrong side of the track. So yes, you're experiencing parental alienation that way. And then you learn the hard way, like they say. Now, is that good or bad? It's probably bad, but I mean, the good thing about it, watching videos like this and with all the books and things they have out, you can learn about parental alienation and narcissism like fairly easy. So it's no excuse for not knowing about it. You know, you just but the thing about it, you got to know the questions to ask. Right. So if you don't know, you just don't know. So who fault is it? You know, so that's why I'm putting out these videos about parental alienation and talking to the men and to the women. You know, it, it happens both ways. So just realize that if you're in this situation, just try your best, do your best, and it'll work out in the long run. Remember, patience and prayer. All right, let's keep moving. Because a lot of people like to say this. A lot of people like to say this. I'm going to tell you, I didn't did this being the bigger person. So a lot of issues that come about, whether it's a marriage or a relationship, you know, especially dealing with children, you know, you try to be the bigger person. You don't want to talk about the parent. You don't want to, you know, do anything bad in front of the children. You just want to be the bigger person. But I will tell you this, even though I said what I said about not talking about the parent, which is true, you still have to stand up for yourself in certain situations. You have to know when to pick your battle, know what battles to fight. You can't fight all battles because you're not going to win all of them. So my point is you have to, you can't just let the other parent just run over you 24 seven. You have to know, like I said, to stand up for yourself, and take accountability for the things that you've done. Once you take accountability for the things that you've done in the parental alienation cycle, I think that breaks up something in the atmosphere. I, that's my personal belief. I think what happens is, you know, you're able to take account and then the children see, they actually can see you making a difference, making a, you, you actually putting forth an effort to say, you know what, I want to be in your life, you know, and hopefully you catch this earlier than I did. You don't wait to the end and try to, you know, some of us, you know, we have grudges and things like that. So hopefully you can catch this in the beginning stages of parental alienation and be there for your kids and just stay there and, you know, experience, you know, sports and, and graduations and proms and all this, that and the other, you know, you want to experience all those things. So, you know, hey, just telling you my point of view. So the second part that I wanted to say about parental alienation, you know, experiencing it on the flip side is experiencing it from, again, didn't know, you know, from my biological dad, didn't know that, you know, we were the victim of uh, parental alienation, meaning me and my biological dad. And I'll tell you how that happened. Well, you know, for years and years, I was told that, you know, my mom, you know, she, uh, she, you know, she said my dad didn't pay child support and things like that. And, you know, child support wasn't big because I, I was, I'm not going to sit here and bash my mom. I mean, she took care of me, you know, so things was paid for, always had stuff. But as I got older, you know, you knew something was wrong. You know, I only could see my dad, you know, at my grandfather and grandmother house, you know, things like that. But you're a child, you know, eight, nine, 10, 11. I remember, you know, summer vacations where I go to my grandmother's house, spend the whole two, three months with them sometime, eating tea cakes, ice cream, all the good food, making myself hungry. I'm going to eat after this. But uh, but my thing is, you know, you go to vacation, Bible school, all this stuff with my my grandparents. And then that'd be the only time my dad came, you know, would come see me. But the thing about it, you know, after having a conversation with my biological dad last year, remember I said last year, I ain't talking about 20 years ago. Last year, we came to the conclusion that, you know, some things said and done that, you know, we basically was the victims of parental alienation. Now, you know, you, I know you're like, well, Solomon, well, this should have been some you, but you, like I told you, the parent will place things in, uh, in the child's, you know, right in front of them and make it seem like, 
you know, everything is on the up and up. They're doing everything they can. I experienced this in, in marriage. And now I'm telling you, I experienced this also on my own mom. So it's like, wow. Now, do she know she was promoted to the other nation? I don't know. Maybe she don't know what it means. I'm not going to sit here and try to figure that out. But I know that it was promoted to the other nation on my end. That's what I can tell you. So my thing with that is, you know, being a victim of it twice. I'm not going to be the victim of it again, meaning I'm going to make sure that, you know, my daughters, you know, I just tell them what, you know, about this, you know, continue talking about it, you know, continue telling others, not just my daughters, but just other people, other men, especially that's going to parental alienation and women that's dealing with this. I know a lot of y'all deal with this. So I want to make sure that you're not being lost in the sauce, like they like to say. So, you know, you, you think that, you have this upstanding person and the whole time they just stabbing you in the back every time you turn your back. So just realize that this is not an easy subject to talk about. It's uh, It can be hard, but it's something that needs to be talked about. So I got a question. How many of you, uh, you know, have experienced parental alienation? And if so, what are your experiences from it? Uh, so what I would like to do, you know, I, I'm going to make this a premiere. I know this is a premiere, but what I would like to do, I would like you to place your comments up under the video after the premiere ends. And I'll place this same question as the, you know, at the top, I'll pin it at the top of the uh, comments. You know, I want to start a dialogue so we can start talking about this, you know, uh, openly and, and sharing our experiences. I know we have before. Like I said, again, if you haven't checked out the parental alienation, I'll actually drop each one of those videos in the con in the description section of this video so you want to go back and check out those lives what my wife and i did you can check those out but again how many of you have experienced parental alienation and what are your experiences from it because all of us going to be different but yet the same just like dealing with a narcissist right we all have different stories but we sit there and start telling our stories oh there's a lot of evil stuff that happens that's similar in nature all right we coming down to the end. We don't have too much longer left. Uh, next Bible verse, Joshua 24, 15. Uh, As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Why did I say that? Well, my thing is I can't control what happens in other houses, but I can't control what happened in my home. So as long as I'm serving God, as long as I'm doing what God told me to do, which is my purpose, which is doing what I'm doing now, sharing my story about parental alienation, talking about narcissist abuse in the workplace, talking about narcissist abuse, you know, just in general or relationships, I know that I'm doing my part. So I can't control what goes on in other homes, but I still can pray for other people in their homes and their situation with parental alienation. So that's that's my calling right now, what I have going on. Will it stay the same? I don't know, but just telling you that you have to realize you have to pray even for the parent. I know I know we don't want to. I know we don't want to pray for the, for the parent that's, that's involved in the parental alienation, but I'm telling you, you have to pray for that parent also because God can change some stuff where you can at least get a relationship with your kids. Now, can can what would, would they change? I don't know. God can change anything. I'm not gonna sit there and question God because He can do anything. You know, He created the earth, the moon, stars, the, the water. I mean, come on, now. I mean, all these things. So he can change somebody's mind. But have I seen a narcissist actually change? They would have to want to change for that to happen. That's why I'm at with that. Uh, why does parental alienation matter? It matters because it affects so many households around the world. Notice, I didn't say America. I didn't say Texas where I'm at. I didn't say Canada. I said the world. Now, we might not hear about all the stories in Africa or, or Europe or Japan or Asia, or anything like that. Trust me, it's happening here. It's happening around the world. So a lot of people are experiencing parental alienation. Again, it's nothing... Uh, easy to talk about, but it's something something that should be discussed more and more often by people like me and other people that has experienced parental alienation. So again, like I said, I'm gonna drop that question down that I said earlier in the comments. So I would like it if y'all would just you know just start a dialogue, you know, with the comments. Oh, and again, hey, if you like the video, man, hit the like button for your boy and go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel. Also, you know, I'm dropping videos, you know every uh wednesday and then i have a live every friday both 7 p.m central standard time all right who suffers from parental alienation i think i alluded to this earlier it's going to be the, the children and it's going to be obviously the person that's being alienated against so but 
besides that, it's going to be other people affected. So think about the grandparents on the, let's say on my side, so the grandparents on that side or or the cousins or the whatever, they can't see your children. That's a whole family that's affected. So it's not just the children and you, it's going to be the children, you and everybody on your side of the family, because in my experiences with it, and they don't want anyone on that side of the family to see it, to see the children. Guess what? They're not going to see them. You could be in the same city, same town, same rural area where everybody knows everybody, and it still will be parental alienation going on. So you have to realize that also. Last but not least, the unknown. The unknown is learning about parental alienation and then learning that the person might be a narcissist or they, is, they, they are a narcissist and learning the signs and traits of narcissism and, and how does that affect your relationship with your children. So parental alienation, like I said, it happens a lot. Uh, like I said, it's just a little snippet video I wanted to do. God put it on my heart to actually do this video and just tell a little bit more of my story. So my thing is with parental alienation, you have to be willing to sit down, have a conversation with your children. If you can't talk to the parent, hopefully you can talk to them. Continue praying for them, continue loving on them recognize all the signs you know when they when they start smearing you you know the smear campaign that's part of parental alienation too so what they're doing is they they talking to your family they talking to their family talking about how bad you are how abusive you was and in some cases you probably never did none of that but to destroy your character and then to make them themselves look good in court that's what they do so now you have a situation where not only your own family going against you you got your ex-family that you just divorced they going against you Matter of fact, I did a video about that, why you should divorce the narcissist and their family. The reason why I put that in there, why be friends with the family members from your ex when they all really don't like you? They're just pumping you for information. Kind of like a narcissist getting supply out of you. So they like the little flying monkeys and the uh, enablers. So I got a video about that too if you want to check that out. But again, man, look, at the end of the day, you have to realize that parental alienation, it took years and years to destroy your relationship with your children. It's going to take years and years to fix that relationship with your children. And it can be done. I, I'm not saying my relationship is 100% fixed. I still have work to do. I'm telling y'all, you know, it's, it's, it's a work in progress, but I am telling y'all it can get better and it will get better, but you have to be willing to take that first step. Remember what I said earlier, the start of mile, you had to take that first step. Or if you're on a bike, you got to take that first pedal and, you know, get out there. But if you don't never do it or you don't want to put in the work, you'll never experience real, you know, a real relationship with your kids. And they'll be 40, 50 years old and hate you to the core and not ever know why. So just remember this. You don't remember nothing else about this video. Pick your battles. Don't fight with them all the time. Talking about the kids or the parent, you know, that's alien. And don't fight with them all the time. Just pick your battles. Stand up for yourself when you can love on them, you know, take them out when you can, text them, send them birthday cards, you know, do all that, you know, but don't be a fool, meaning if you're not getting no no responses back on, on text messages or, or you know, you calling them, you know, three, four times a week, you never get any, you know, I'm not going to sit there and say, just continue doing it, you know, give it a little time, go to God in prayer, go in your war room, your closet, wherever you go to pray and pray and then maybe slack off and maybe, you know, Maybe text them once a week instead of three, four, five times a day, you know, and see if that will open up something. Try to go see them and see, you know, pop up at their job. I did that. Pop up at their job while they're working. You know where they work at and just see if you can have a conversation with them. Is that the ideal situation? No, but hey, it works, you know, because a lot of times, like, oh, that's my dad. I can, you know, I can take a break. You might have 15 minutes to say what you have to say. And remember, opportunity knocks only once. That 15 minutes, that might be your opportunity to actually fix or at least begin to fix your relationship with your with your uh, sons and daughters. So again, hey, this was a, a I was went a little bit longer than what I thought, but like I said, this is you know parental alienation. Uh, again, it's my story of parental alienation, and I figured you know sharing my story it can help others, and I hope you know and pray that it does. Uh, I think I know the other four part series, like I told you, I linked it in the description. I know a lot of people watch those videos, you know, so it's pretty good. So I just wanted to do another one, you know, because I know a few people that, you know, be in the chat in my lives and stuff like that on my premieres that actually uh, 
going through this, going through this right now. So I'm praying for you. Uh, like I said, it's not easy, but just know you're not alone. You're not the first person. You won't be the last to go through parental alienation. Now, hopefully, you know, you figure out how to fix your relationship with your children and then you'll be the you'll be able to help somebody else that's actually going through parental alienation at some point in time in their life. So again, hey, Solomon Savoy, this is my story of parental alienation. Uh, like, subscribe, share. I'll see y'all next time. This faith based workplace. Hey, make sure that y'all answer the questions. I'm gonna put them in the uh in the comment area and make sure that y'all answer you know those questions for me. Then we're gonna start a nice dialogue. I want to see if I can get like 50 comments. I never said this before, you know, I don't really, you know, do the comments, but, you know, I try to when I can. So let's see if we can get like 50 comments, you know, back and forth in the uh, actual comment area and we'll see what happens. All right. Be blessed. I'll see y'all next time on Faith-Based Workplace.